Her work is going to blow your mind. It is about um, developing these tiny biosensors that can actually detect disease just by your breath and detecting it early. It's, it's mind-blowing stuff. So she's going to ask you to consider your breath. So ladies and gentlemen, a very big warm welcome for our first speaker tonight. Her name is Nushin Nasiri. Cancer affects everyone, young and old, rich and poor, men, women, and children. It's one of the leading causes of death in the world. Worldwide, in 2015, the four most common types of cancer that killed men and women were lung, breast, liver, and stomach cancer. In Australia, cancer kills more than 45,000 each year. Globally, the numbers are astronomical, more than 8 million deaths. And yet many of these deaths can be avoided. Between 30 to 50% of cancers are preventable by healthy lifestyle choices, and others can be detected early, treated, and cured. In fact, cancer at an early stage doesn't kill anyone, but by the time doctors detect the cancer using traditional blood tests, it can often be too late. Most cancers are at an advanced stage when they are first found. At this stage, cancer is very hard to cure. Four years ago, when I was choosing my field of study, I found these statistics compelling. So for my PhD research at the Australian National University, I wanted to explore how we could detect the diseases at the very early stage, when the chance of recovery is much higher, and not just cancer, but all kinds of diseases. To start my research, I found some studies reporting that people smell differently when they are sick. Apart from the way behavior is modified, the body chemistry changes as well when you are sick. Surprisingly, the disease shouldn't necessarily be physical. People who live with schizophrenia also have different body chemistry. And as a result of this chemistry change, some biomarkers are emitted into our blood system and then into our breath and give us this unique opportunity to detect the disease just by sniffing out the breath. But how can nanotechnology help us? Nano means 10 to the power of minus 9 meter. To have a better imagination about nano, this is my fingertip, which is about 1 centimeter wide. An ant is approximately 5 millimeter wide. Human hair has a diameter of about 100 microns. Blood cell is about 10 microns. Bacteria is 1 micron. Viruses are around 100 nanometers, and DNA is only 2 nanometers. And these are the nanoparticles we produce every day in our laboratory, with an average particle size of 20 nanometers. But my research in nanotechnology starts with this. Very cute nose. What is the difference between dog's nose and the human's one? This may not be conventionally pretty, but if you know how good dogs' noses are, you might prefer one like this. Dogs have 300 million olfactory receptor cells compared to our 5 million, 60 times more sensitive. In addition, their inner nose has two airflow channels, which are separated from each other. One is for breathing, and one is just for smelling. Plus, the, do the dog's brain area responsible for processing this load of information is significantly larger and more sophisticated compared to human. And, and that's, that's how they can easily distinguish and remember the sense of different types of things around them, as well as their locations, like a finely tuned GPS system. And it's not only specific to dogs. The honeybee antenna is a finely tuned vapor sensor with a sensitivity of parts per trillion, quite comparable to dogs. The bees can be trained to stick out their tongues as a response to a particular scent. The training involves giving them a couple of seconds burst of a biomarker vapor, followed by sugar water revolve. Then, when the bees detect the scents they've been trained, they stick out their tongues for the sugar. So yes, yes, we can train dogs and bees to sniff out disease, but it's not practical, which is where nanotechnology comes into play and helps us to fabricate these extremely sensitive nanosensors to smell for us. 
The idea of detecting disease by analyzing human breath is not a new idea. In 400 BCE, Hippocrates mentioned that maybe breath aroma can be related to the disease. Later, scientists realized that there are thousands of organic compounds or biomarkers in human breath that can be potentially related to the disease. It means that instead of blood testing, which is invasive, painful, expensive, and takes weeks to reveal the results, you can simply breathe onto the sensor and get the results in a minute. However, it's not as easy as it looks. An example is acetone, which is a well-known biomarker for diabetes. But the acetone concentration difference between healthy people and patients is parts per billion. Parts per billion is similar to finding a drop of dye in an Olympic-sized swimming pool. Before nanotechnology, it was impossible to precisely detect this tiny concentration. But today, we have sensors like this one. It's an accuracy of 100 times higher than what we need. But how does nanotechnology help? It's all related to the available surface area. Here, we have a cube with a length, width, and height of 20 centimeter. Now, what happens to the cube surface area if I divide it into eight cubes? You see, I'm not changing the material. Neither is mass nor volume, but the available surface area is doubled. Now, imagine if I keep dividing each of them into smaller and smaller cubes until having cubes with 20 nanometer length. If I do that, we will have 10 million times larger surface area. Same material, same mass, same volume, but 10 million times larger surface area. In fact, by shrinking the structural elements of any device down to nanoscale, we are significantly increasing the available surface area for the biomarker's detection. And that's exactly what we need to do to have a higher sensitivity. It's been more than a decade since nanotechnology was used to increase the available surface area for the biomarker's detection. But it's not enough if you are wanting to detect parts per billion. We need more and more surfaces to detect the tiniest concentration of biomarker in your breath. But how? This is a microscopic image of this sensor. It's, an ab it's, a, it's the ability to detect parts per billion in comparison with a conventional one. Both sensors are made of the same material. It's the same nano-sized particles made by nanotechnology, but they have different structure. The one on the left has a spongy, ultra-porous nanostructure with 98% porosity. It means that only 2% of the sensor's volume is made of bulk material, and 98% is air. Due to this ultra-spongy nanostructure, your breath can penetrate deep into the sensor and comes into a huge available surface area, which is large enough to detect the tiniest possibility of having a disease in your body. The detection mechanism is based on a chemical reaction between the biomarker in your breath and the surface of my sensor, resulting in a change in electrical properties of the sensor. The more biomarker in your breath, the larger electrical change in my sensor. But the challenge is not only the sensitivity, but also the selectivity of my sensor. It means that the sensor should be sensitive only to a particular biomarker in your breath and not to the other thousand organic compounds. And that's the hardest part in this research, to find a material which is sensitive only to one particular biomarker in human breath and not to any other one. My focus in this field is to fabricate a device made of several sensors, with each of them being sensitive to a particular biomarker, to diagnose several diseases in your body just with a puff of your breath. In that case, the device can be used to analyze your breath and detect a variety of diseases, from diabetes to various types of cancer, at a very early stage, when the chance of recovery is much higher. The project has two goals. The first one is to fabricate a book-sized device which would be installed in any clinic and drugstore available to anyone to check their health just by breathing onto the sensor and get the results immediately. Achieving the first goal is not far off. 
and the second one, which needs more investigation and experimental studies, is making the device so small to put it in your phone and help you to check your health every single day. Nanotechnology has shown its potential to positively impact our quality of life. And my research in this field helps to delve deeper and deeper down into the plentiful room at the bottom and uncover the new ways to save and improve the quality of life of many, many lives in the near future. Thank you.